Support comes from the Norton Simon Museum. Celebrate the start of summer with the museum's annual garden party. The event in the Sculpture Garden features live jazz, art-making activities, and a special menu for sale in the cafe. Saturday, June 22nd from 4 to 6.30 p.m. More at nortonsimon.org. Support for LAS comes from FX, presenting Welcome to Wrexham. The stakes have never been higher as Rob McElhenney and Ryan Reynolds navigate running the third oldest professional football club in the world. Emmy eligible in all unstructured reality categories. Today on the LA Report, civil rights icon and Los Angeles legend John Lawson Jr. has died. We'll learn about his legacy. California's got a big wage theft problem, so why isn't the state using money it has for the issue to help address it? And summer is officially here. The L.A. Public Library's annual reading program kicks off today. It's Monday, June 10th. This is the L.A. Report from L.A.S. 89.3. Los Angeles lost a giant this weekend. Civil rights movement icon Reverend James Lawson Jr. has died at the age of 95. The former longtime pastor of L.A.'s Holman United Methodist Church passed away on Sunday, according to his family. L.A.'s civics and democracy correspondent Frank Stoltz says Lawson was one of the key architects of Martin Luther King Jr.'s nonviolent tactics. During the 1950s and 60s, Lawson trained hundreds of young civil rights activists in nonviolent tactics. Lawson had studied Satyagraha, Gandhi's principles of nonviolent resistance, while working as a preacher in India. Lawson took part in the 1961 Freedom Rides, and in the 1970s, he moved to Los Angeles, where he was active in the labor movement, leading his congregation in the West Adams neighborhood for 25 years. Governor Newsom is working with lawmakers to balance the state budget amid a large revenue shortfall, which is due this Saturday. And one surefire way to close deficits would be to raise taxes, But there's a proposed ballot measure that would make it harder for state and local governments to raise taxes. The governor doesn't like that. The legislative leadership doesn't like it. The unions don't like it. Nobody likes all the political establishment of California hates the thing. That's Dan Walters with Cal Matters. The proposed ballot measure is in front of the state Supreme Court, which is set to issue a ruling before the end of the month about whether or not it'll appear on the November ballot. Another unexpected result of California's budget woes is that a pot of state money meant to address labor violations has instead been going to address the state budget deficit. Cal Matters reporter Jenny Kwong says that's a problem for the state labor commissioner's office, which processes claims around improper pay. For years, this office has been very understaffed, which has led to um, a crisis in in these claims. It takes oftentimes years for a worker to get their claim resolved. Business and labor groups both say that state money should be going to hiring more staff. We've got that full story on LAS.com. In other workers' rights news, members of the union representing 6,000 Food for Less workers will begin voting this week on whether to authorize a strike. Their current contract with Kroger has expired without a tentative agreement on a new one. The United Food and Commercial Workers Union says Food for Less workers aren't being offered as much money as other Kroger-owned stores. So we'll see if they approve the strike, I believe, this Friday. Philanthropist Rebecca Grossman was sentenced to 15 years to life in prison today for killing two young brothers in Westlake Village three years ago. The co-founder of the Grossman Byrne Foundation was speeding when she struck and killed 11-year-old Mark Iskander and his 8-year-old brother Jacob. They were walking in a marked crosswalk when they were hit. Grossman was convicted in February of second-degree murder, vehicular manslaughter, and a hit-and-run. When we come back, we look at California's ambitious plan to add transitional kindergarten to all public schools. Support for LAist comes from FX's Shogun. Set in Japan in the year 1600, Lord Yoshi Torunaga is fighting for his life as his enemies unite against him when a mysterious European ship is found marooned in a nearby fishing village. Its English pilot, John Blackthorne, comes bearing secrets that could tip the balance of power. Starring Hiroyuki Sanada, Cosmo Jarvis, and Anna Sawai, Shogun is available for your Emmy consideration at fxnetworks.com slash fyc. Support for LAist comes from Michelson Philanthropies, advancing solutions to challenges in California and beyond. 
Founded by Dr. Gary Michelson and based in Los Angeles, its four private foundations support biomedical research, higher education, and animal welfare. Guided by the mission to make life less unfair, Michelson Philanthropies helps vulnerable and underserved communities through catalytic grant making, impact investments, energetic advocacy, and strategic partnerships. Learn more at michelsonphilanthropies.org. This is the LA Report. I'm Jacob Margolis. California is preparing to roll out a new grade for four-year-olds across all public schools. It's called Transitional Kindergarten, or TK, and every school district will offer it by the fall of next year. And the state wants bilingual instruction to play a big role. Most children under the age of six in the state live in homes where language other than English is spoken. Carolyn Crowlot is an advocate for dual language programs. You know, sometimes we hear, oh, if they want to learn English, we need to get them in English classrooms. But actually, the opposite it is true. If children have a very strong foundation in their home language, they actually learn English more easily. The state is having trouble finding enough bilingual teachers to fill those classrooms. The Los Angeles Public Library's summer reading program kicks off today. Folks of all ages can read and compete, complete activities to earn prizes. Cassandra Presley was one of the first people to sign up at Library's Harbor City branch. I like to read, but I noticed that like I can get off track if there's no, I don't want to say accountability, but just like I like having reading buddies. So I feel like this is like a giant reading buddy party. Another motivator, free tote bag. Last year's tote was so popular, the library ran out before the end of the summer. This year's design features a vibrant city street scene by a local artist. Now, some big sports news. UConn head coach Dan Hurley has turned down the Lakers' offer to lead the team. Last week, people with the Lakers were stunned to find out that L.A. was prepared to offer Hurley the role because for weeks it appeared they were zeroing in on former player and commentator J.J. Redick. Now it looks like the Lakers will resume courting Redick and New Orleans Pelicans assistant coach James Borrego. If you don't remember, former head coach Darvin Ham was fired after a failed finals bid. Hurley, uh, who won back-to-back national national championships with the Huskies, will stay at UConn. And a bridge near Tarzana Elementary School has been getting a makeover. Today, it was unveiled. The Snoopy Bridge features drawings of Peanuts characters donated by cartoonist Charles Schultz himself. We've all grown up with... We've all grown up with this. So who's not a fan? That's resident Kirk Donovan, who spearheaded a campaign to help restore the illustrations, which have been covered with dirt and graffiti. Today's unveiling features the first five restored panels of Charlie Brown and the gang. Thanks for listening to the L.A. Report. I'm Jacob Margolis in for Nick Roman. Be sure to listen again tomorrow morning with Suzanne Watley. And the LA Report is produced by Libby Rainey and edited by Tiffany Ujie. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse is the director of content development. Our engineer today is Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. You can read more at LAist.com and listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. One event can change a family for generations. I'm Emily Kwong, host of a new podcast from LA Studios called Inheriting. It's about Asian American and Pacific Islander families and their histories. Join me for an immersive storytelling event at the Crawford in Pasadena. It's June 27th. Get your tickets now at las.com slash events.